G'day guys, Mark from TAT the Automotive Technician. Today I'd like to share with you a TAT tech tip. Now this involves a VE Commodore 2010 model with a 3 litre engine in it. The customer recently purchased it and he'd gone ahead and replaced all the oxygen sensors because it came up with a fault code. When it came in to me, I did a fault scan and it came up with a P0050, P0056, P0155 and a P0158, all relating to the heater circuit in the oxygen sensors. I'd like to share with you the testing techniques that I used. So there's bank one, uh, heater one and heater two. They're clearly drawing some current. And over here, bank two, heater one and heater two, no current being drawn whatsoever. Okay, for the sake of the exercise, I'm on bank one, just to show you guys what a good uh, oxygen sensor and circuit should look like. So here is the oxygen sensor itself. You can see he goes down right down there. And I've gone into the uh, heater circuit. How do I know which is the heater circuit? Let's have a look and see what the wires are. There's two white ones. There's a gray one and there's a black one. So the ones that are too white, too black, whatever they are, they are the heater circuit. I've back probed it into there, gone into my multimeter, and hey presto, I've got 10.2 ohms. That's an indicator that the heater itself in the oxygen sensor is okay. Now I'm not concerned about the oxygen sensor itself at the moment because it's a heater circuit fault. And another test that we can do is to see if the ECU is uh, directing or driving that heater and that will do it uh, via pulse width modulation. So I'm just going to hook up a globe to that now, and we should, or in the uh, ECU side of things, that's this connector over here, and we're going to hook up a globe there, and we should end up with some sort of flashing or pulsing, or a long time on, then it'll gently go off, one or the other. So next I'm going to hook up a globe to see what the ECU is pumping out, making sure that we get some sort of flashing or some sort of pulsation of the globe itself. That will tell me that the drivers within the ECU are okay. You shouldn't use a globe because it's going to blow up the ECU. Well, not so much. Let me show you. We need Ohm's law. Now we know the voltage of the vehicle, pretty much around about 12 volts. And we also know what the resistance was. Now that was, if I remember rightly, about 10.7, I believe. And therefore, the current that will be flowing through that circuit to the heater will be about 1.1 uh, amps. If I use my globes, I've actually listed what these globes are. As you can see here, uh, that guy there is uh, 0.42 of an amp. Um, and if I put the two together, uh, we've got 2.1 amps, upside down of course. And this guy here by himself is 1.7 amps. So I'm quite safe to use this guy here. Okay, so as mentioned, here's my oxygen sensor connector. That guy there goes back to the ECU. Now one of those terminals is actually snuck back in the connector. It's, um, where's my fat finger? Right there. That guy there has gone back into the connector. These guys are still stuck up proud, as they should be, but this guy's actually slid backwards. So is that an indication of what the uh, bank two will be like? This is the good side, remember? So we'll sort this out and make sure that it's okay before we head over to bank two. I've got my light hooked up here. Now, as I mentioned, I'm just running, a, what is it, 0.42 of an amp. Uh, through my globe here, so that's fine. It's not going to damage anything. I've gone into my oxygen sensor uh, wiring from the ECU, so that's our uh, heater circuit. So as I mentioned, this should come on or flash or do something along those lines as an indication that the drivers and the wiring going to the oxygen sensor heater circuit is in good condition. See that pulsing for a sec? There we go, look at that, eh? So that's, remember that duty cycle that we mentioned before? It was like 75% or something. Right hand side is doing what he's meant to do. All right, so just mirroring the tests that we did on the other side, we're now in the heater circuit. You can see the two white wires there. And I've got a good connection in here. Let's have a look at what our multimeter says. This here is an open circuit with its heater. Like seriously, this guy was meant to have replaced it uh, already. So where did he get his oxygen sensors from? eBay? I don't know. Um, so <laughs> this is a dead oxygen sensor. If everything is working okay, we should see a pulsation of that globe. The ECU is okay. The wiring is okay. See this little terminal here, this female terminal in the oxygen sensor itself is pushed all the way backwards. 
and let's have a look what do we have well we have bank one obviously we've got some current bank two we've got current now that they're all connected and they're not broken of course um, so we've got uh, and also we've got our duty cycle happening here and that's working correctly and it's commanded on Hopefully these testing procedures have been of use to you in the workshop to make the job a little bit easier for you. Also it highlights to you the importance of buying quality parts. Sometimes genuine is the only way to solve oxygen sensor faults. Have a look at our repair solutions on the website because there's a multitude of answers to the problems that you might face. So until next time we catch up on another video guys, this is Mark signing off, I'll catch you later.